Hey, is that a fortune cookie? Yeah. Do you, do you, you want it? it? Yeah. Here. Okay, o only if you read what the fortune is. Okay. Oh, trust me. Shander said I can't have cookies. Well. So she took all the cookies out of the house, so I gotta have the... Yeah. Oh, it well, broke. I've never really had one that hasn't broke. Okay. Confucius say, don't commit stop it. <laughs> and that's a stop it, and this is a stop it episode. Oh, oh. The Prophet's Resurrection, Land yeah. Cruisers TV. So this whole episode, like we tried to shoot this episode a couple of times ago and it was, um, we were so disorganized and then we tried to sort of redo the parts today so we didn't appear to be so disorganized and I'm, we're just as disorganized. And I think it's because we're getting super close to being able to be move, done with this move. Plus it's the holiday season, today's our Christmas party, Chandra's coming, um, we got an FG45 showing up that we're buying, tons of stuff's happening. So this is going to continue on with the disheveled, disorganized sort of theme. Let's go talk about some stop -its. Here's the stop it as delicately as possible that I can possibly put this stop it. If you're building Land Cruisers professionally and charging people to do it, stop, how do I do this without swearing? Stop messing them up. Stop taking shortcuts, especially if you're charging top dollar. Stop painting over rust and this thing had, mechanically speaking, I don't know, a hundred problems, right? Starting with the fact that the engine, which had zero miles on it, was the, the crankcase was full of coolant, right? Um, and then going on to the fact that all of the mounts that held the engine in were literally held to the frame with caulking, <laughs> the, some bolts, but instead of welds, caulking to look like welds and like, it's a south of the border restoration, but mechanically speaking, a horrible, horrible, horrible nightmare. I'm tired of being a cleanup boy. I'm tired of having to clean up poor workmanship. And I'm sure that clients are tired of having to pay for stuff twice. Let's go look at what's wrong with this. Here's what we're doing with this vehicle because it was 100% undrivable, scary, dangerous, and unsafe. Um, we are gonna, gonna go ahead and modernize it, keeping a bunch of cool Toyota DNA. Right there, a 3FE has been rebuilt and cosmetically restored, coupled to a Toyota H55F and a brand new split case. And that assembly is getting ready to be mocked up and go in. So along with the 3FE, 60 series steering, which is an awesome way to get power steering in these with and eliminate all the center arm and the, and the other things about a 40 series that make them, uh, you know, to give them steering slop. And we're gonna, and Alex is getting ready to perform our shack reversal. So between the 3FE and the five speed and the shack reversal and the 60 series power steering, plus disc brakes all around, this thing's gonna be cherry in terms of drivability. We had to change the firewall. And here was funny about the firewall. Someone had already welded in, is this bolted in? Yes. Somebody had already welded in a new firewall section, right? One to, com to accommodate for the booster. That was cool, except for then, they welded in all of the holes that would have accommodated this booster and bolted a non-boosted um, regular brake master cylinder up to the firewall that they had modified to have one. Doesn't make sense. So anyway, we fixed that too. I bought my first Land Cruiser in 1980, uh, an FJ40, and met Marv Spector, who was then working at Manafree. Um, and we became friends and a few, maybe six months after I bought that, that FJ40, I was at the grocery store where I was living and I saw this truck in the parking lot. So I didn't know what it was. I, I knew almost nothing about Land Cruisers. Um, next time I saw Marv, I said, Hey, I saw this FJ40 with a pickup truck bed. And he said one thing to me, buy it. 
That's that's all he told me. So several months later, I saw it again at the grocery store, parked next to it, waited like an hour. And this gentleman came out. He was probably 70 years old or so. Um, I said, hey, you know, I love your truck. I want to buy it. And uh, he said, no, but thanks anyway. And got in his truck and drove away. And I uh, followed him. So I followed him home, figured out where he lived, and started visiting him every three to six months for the next six years. One day I came over, his wife answered the door, and I said, I'm here to buy the Land Cruiser. And she said, come back in an hour. And I knew it was mine at that point. So uh, I came back, we made a deal. I've owned it since 1986 driven hundreds, thousands of miles with it. Uh, it went over the Rubicon in 1987. Since then, I've probably put 1,500 miles on it since, since the 90s. I take it to the car shows, you know, the Toyota Fest. I'm a member of uh, Torque, the Toyota Owners Restorers Club. I'm just uh, tired of seeing it sit and not get used. So you've heard this topic before. So this is kind of on like a higher level. If you're a paint shop or a restoration shop and you're gonna restore a Land Cruiser like this one, I mean, you're going nine tenths of the way. You might as well go the last tenth and do some things right. Let me show you. This is a nice paint job. Um, you know, it's not the best, but it's really not that bad. It was professionally done, but they did some stuff that drives me insane. So one of them, stuff like this. Like this, probably because they're not a Toyota shop, this hole looked like it was chewed out by a beaver, and it's not an original hole. There's nothing that would ever go there from the factory. Now, that hole should have been welded up. I know these people had a welder because I know they, re they moved the wheel well. Like uh, I, I talked them through moving the wheel well so we could stretch the rear axle like we do. Um, anyway, so they had a welder. They could have welded this hole up. They could have welded this hole up. Um, they could have welded the hole on the other side up, which is really, really bad, and there's more. They could have welded that hole up, this hole, like I said, that hole. There's just holes all over this car that shouldn't be here. And if you don't know, there's resources. Uh, the Land Cruiser Heritage Museum has really good shots of hundreds of Land Cruisers. Um, you could just Google FJ40, you can see. Is, is this hole supposed to be there? I don't know, let's weld it up. Look at this one right here. This one is even worse than just a hole. That's a hole with a flat blade screwdriver having screw. I don't know if that's a machine screw or if it's a screw, but uh, uh, there's nothing flat blade on a Land Cruiser, at least uh, not on the dashboard. Um, I'm gonna find out what it is. It's got a, it's got a wing nut on it. <laughs> it's got a wing nut on it. <laughs> All they would have, you don't even require a tool to take that out and weld that up. So before you paint, Look really carefully um, at, at what you're doing. See if there's any holes that look like they shouldn't be there. Then go do the research to verify whether or not they should be there and then weld them up and get rid of them properly. Uh, because now, I mean, there's really nothing you can do about that. We'd have to pull the top, pull the cage, weld that up, repaint the dash, a lot of work. And the, the holes like this, I'll repaint the windshield frame too. And I'll repaint the cowling after we do that. And there's one on the other side, let's go do that one. So this is the same thing. Somebody probably had an antenna here at some point. Um, this is kidney bean shaped hacked out piece of sheet metal is now covering a big ugly hole with another flat, flat blade screwdriver fastener right there. And they just painted over that. I mean, you know, it's, so that compromised this whole restoration, this whole paint job. I mean, it really could have been a lot nicer than it is. They had it nine tenths of the way there. They just didn't jump over that last little, you know, bit. The thing is, if you if you have a chasm to jump across and you jump almost all the way, you still fall all the way to the bottom and die. So might as well jump all the way. Stop it. So enough of the negativity. Stop it's can be kind of negative. Uh, here's a positive thing. This is a 1983 FJ40 with factory power steering and air conditioning, US spec. That's cool enough by itself, but what's even cooler is that this vehicle belongs to the guy who bought it new still. He, you know, original owner, um, the only four wheel drive vehicle that he's ever owned and the only uh, vehicle that he's driven that whole time, um, except for something else that he drives in the summer. Um, I mean, who does that anymore? I mean, that's such a cool thing. My dad did that. He bought a 1980 Chevy pickup and he drove it as his only car until the day he died. 
Um, this is the same thing. It just happens to also be the rarest Land Cruiser there is. Uh, he sent it to us because the tub was so rusted out it was unsafe. Um, so we restored a new tub for it, a, um, a tub from Cool Cruisers of Texas, the, the, the best FJ40 tubs you can get. Um, but then we just put it back together with all the original uh, body panels and the original patina. So the only thing that's redone on this is the tub and, and the seat upholstery. So we're driving this FJ60 and uh, this was already on an episode. Um, I don't think we got to drive it, so I'm glad that we're doing that now. Uh, but it was on an episode, and then I went to the owner, and uh, there was a problem uh, that uh, we caused. So uh, since this is appropriate for a stop it episode, since we're talking about things that everybody else should stop, I guess we should throw ourselves under the bus, right? So um, we actually installed the flex plate between the uh, torque converter and the engine backwards, and that caused... Uh, some pressure to be uh, around the bolts on the flex plate until it finally broke. <laughs> and so the owner, it started clanking and banging. It would still move because it, it broke in sort of a triangular pattern so that it just sort of overlapped each other and stayed connected and still drove. But anyway, stopping, stop installing flex plates backwards, uh, profits, uh, trust me, uh, we stopped that. Uh, and so we're gonna get drive this thing. So check this out. This is a Cummins R2.8 eight-speed auto, uh, 60 series on an 80 series chassis. Uh, my favorite, probably my favorite combination of Land Cruisers is this right here because I've got a classic looks, 60 series looks on an 80 series chassis with 80 series drivability. And then in a, while we had this back fixing our mistake, uh, we made a bunch of uh, improvements to it. Uh, things that the owner had learned about, that we learned about, that it could be better. So I'll go through that list. Um, part of what we do is always try to make everything better. And this one it received lots of improvements. But before we do that, let's pull over and uh, we'll do a little zero to 60. So I love the eight speed. It keeps this engine in its happy place, right? So just possibly imagine for aftermarket drivetrain to go in the mountains super fun to drive so in addition to um install the flex plate correctly we're already gonna have to slow down because we're this is sixth gear we haven't even hit seventh yet there's seventh but i caught that car oh well you get the idea super fun to drive this 60 had some improvements I told you about. One of them is bigger sway bar. So this is a stock 80 series chassis, two and a half inch old man emu lift. Um, this vehicle is really no uh, heavier than an 80 series. I would imagine it weighs right about the same thing. Uh, but uh, the owner found um, an aftermarket sway bar that he liked. It's heavier duty. Uh, we ended up getting a pair of those. And this thing is flat. I mean, around the mountains, um, you know, there is no body roll, there's no sway uh, when you uh, jerk the wheel back and forth like it had before. And so those sway bars made a huge difference in addition to the king uh, shocks that are on this. What else did the uh, client do? He did this himself. He added this aftermarket steering wheel. Now, honestly, we had never put an aftermarket steering wheel in a 60 series. Um, 60 series steering wheels are very small to the touch. And so um, what we had been doing to compensate for that is a leather wrap, right? But even with a leather wrap, a 60 series steering wheel is pretty small. I mean, you almost feel like it could slip out of your hands. So uh, he found this steering wheel and the adapter, uh, did this all himself, which is a really nice, it's, it's actually the exact right size and in the exact right spot. So this is probably something that we'll be adding, right? We're learning from our customers. Oh, I know where the biggest uh, visual change is. He actually had us paint the roof um, not white like a 40 but sort of a tribute to that we painted it about the color of this inside roll cage uh, the, the interior roll cage in this we matched the leather uh, so that it didn't stick out so much and then we painted the roof that color because he's in Arizona and uh, number one the paint we didn't we didn't restore this whole land cruiser we didn't paint the whole thing um, so the paint on the roof uh, was starting to fade uh, or the third coat was gonna peel so we, we painted the roof and it actually looks really really good oh power locks um he had us add power locks super cool kit for an fj60 i actually don't like aftermarket locks but this kit's awesome so all you, this no uh, separate buttons required i lock that 
All the doors lock. I unlock that. All the doors unlock. Um, pretty quality kit, really. We were able to uh, fabricate a bracket that that uh, bolts up. It's easily reproducible. It does come with a key fob. Another improvement. Power locks. That's a stop it from many, many stop it's ago. This has wheel spacers. It's always a dead giveaway when you can not see very much of the wheel bearing hub, right? So the hubs look like they're nice and flush to the wheel. That, that's that's a dead giveaway that there's a wheel spacer there. Wheel spacers are bad. Stop it. Just handing these engine bases like a torture device. Yeah. <laughs> you got you know, little razor blades sticking out everywhere. Sticking You're everywhere. Jamming your hands into. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I just don't sand it like that one in there, just spray over it. Yeah, spray over it so it all flakes yeah. off. And well, but it won't flake, flake off for months <laughs> yeah. we, or weeks. Yeah, weeks or days. Yeah. Oh, you have to sand paint or, before you spray? Or the first time you wash primer before you? <laughs> yeah. We were just in there looking at that LV. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's a good example. So we did some stop <laughs> This thing, uh, this thing doesn't have that many stop -its. FJ FJ50, we went from an FJ45 to an FJ55. And this thing is getting an engine compartment restoration and a 3 FE. So how about that, you people who are saying that all we do is put Chevy V8s and stuff to 3 FE? Yeah. Yeah. That's what it should have come up. It really should have. 3 FE is my favorite Toyota engine. Nobody understands that. I love them. I love them in the older ones for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't like them in an 80 series, a 91, 92, 80 series. But in anything else with a 5-speed, they're peppy. And... Simple. Like super solid fuel injection, no aftermarket crap like the GM stuff. So you know what? <laughs> this one is, um, I like Holly. It's Holly's been around forever, right? A company that makes carburetors and fuel injection systems. And um, they make this kit called a Sniper. And to be completely fair to Holly, we've never installed a new one. Uh, we've, we've, this is not good. We've never installed it. I'm looking at this cruiser for the first time. That was the reason for this. Uh, I see a couple of stop -its I want to talk about on this. But anyway, Holly, nothing against Holly. Uh, and they've got this fuel injection system called the Sniper and we've never put one in new, uh, mainly because we've tried to fix several others that people have put in and unsuccessfully been able to get working correctly. And we've had some luck. Uh, but here's one thing that I really don't like. This, this is a classic FJ40, it's 70 or 71, something like that. Um, keeping all the Toyota DNA, it even has the one F engine still, right? And the three speed on the column. So this is a pretty retro vintage feeling vehicle. Having this screen right here, this digital display in the middle of this dash is so out of place and then this modern electric fuel pump button which i don't know why fuel pumps should never be on a, their own separate button they go on the ignition system but anyway that and the digital display really just take away from this whole thing right like this could be in the glove box or you know maybe not even on this car does the fuel injection really add enough to a three speed having drum brake having you know old school fj40 does it really add enough to make it that drivable i don't know but even if fuel injection is necessary, the display, the, that should be hidden. That should not be right, right out there. And speaking of stuff that's right out there that really bothers me, you guys have heard this. These. So stainless steel Allen head fasteners do not add value, right? People are thinking that stainless steel is great, but stainless steel is not good because what it does is it creates corrosion of the steel that's around it that's not stainless. So eventually, this is gonna be rusty around this stainless steel bolt. Um, the doors are gonna rust everywhere around the bolts, but also the Allen head, right? Like, it's just not, it's not cool. Stop doing it, I guarantee you, I don't even know that the windshield hinges have them. I'm just, let's go look. Let's go see if the windshield hinges have them. I bet they do. Oh yeah. Stainless steel Allen head. Oh, it's starting, already starting right here. See the rust starting to form on the, the steel that's under the stainless steel, it's already starting. I think this thing was just painted. And in a year, that's gonna be really bad. Stainless steel Allen head bolts. They have their place, American hot rod, whatever, not this. Not Land Cruisers, stop it. Stop it! Stop it! <laughs>
So thanks for watching this episode of Prophets Resurrection Land Cruisers TV. Uh, hopefully I didn't do too many stoppages. I don't even know how many I did. It's so hectic around here. Um, I am so excited to look at this FJ45 pickup. Um, I've been wanting to see this thing for a long time and this is going to a dear, dear client of ours. And so uh, check us out on Facebook, Pro Cruiser on Instagram, resurrectionlandcruisers.com. This is so cool. Thanks for watching. You know what it is, is we're just making you nervous. Yeah, st stage fright. That's what's going on. No, I, I just need to go back to mechanic things. Oh man, it's okay, hard. Okay, I can't watch this. Yeah, it's pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> I can't watch it. <laughs>